this is so cool. Hello. Oh, what on earth? Okay, so how are you guys doing? This is Jacqueline. And um, what on earth is this? Do not think I like this color. Anyways. <laughs> Okay, let's see if we can fix this. Um, yeah, so I'm actually, I'm actually just here. Um, I'm about to do a video. Um, actually, based on the the last video that I did, where I talked a little bit about my um my past um, situation, and I think, you know, I'm just meditating. Well, it's not meditating. I'm just thinking about some of um. Some of the things and so I decided I am going to do another video to kind of just talk about some of the situations that I faced in my past with my as a child um, during that period of time that I was given away and being abused but um, because I just I know that everything that we've been through in our lives is designed to make us better right it is not designed to to it's not designed to kill us or to destroy us but to literally make us better and um if we survive it you know if we make it through and i want to give god thanks because i feel that i've gotten over a lot of things in my life um there's a song that's in my spirit that i'm thinking about and it just says i am grateful for your mercies i am grateful for your grace uh you are king of kings and lord of lords um reign from up above i am grateful i am actually grateful today because had it not been for the lord i know those words seems like so cliche because we've heard them so much, you know. Had it not been for the Lord who was on my side, you know, then what would I do? But really and truly, I can say, of a sure, had it not been for the Lord who was on my side, I have no idea what would have become of me. Um, but, um, yeah, so my, my last video, I talked about being given away as a child and uh, how um, I didn't go into the details of it. And I'm probably still not going to go into the details. I'm just going to talk... A little bit because I you know I think sometimes of what I've been through and then I, I want to learn I want to know what was that what was it supposed to teach me you know and um, I've learned a lot about myself um, it took a lot of years um, to get over some of the stuff it took a lot of years of um, just becoming closer with God and knowing who I am in Christ um, before I could actually get over it so I was looking at some of the different issues oh my god Anyways, um, so as a little girl, <laughs> I was given away, um, and I mentioned in my last video that I hate the word vacation because it still makes me feel like, you know, being given away again. When I go out on the road, I still have an issue um, where if I need to go out and do something, I literally go, come back home and go and do something else and come back home because every single time I find myself I just need to be home and and I I now know that it's because of this whole episode in my life where I was given away told I was going on a vacation and never got back home for um four and a half years um I never seen I never seen my family again for those years and um and then was just and and so it felt even now when i leave the home it's like i need to get back home because there's a part of me that is afraid of getting lost outside i don't go out i don't go to the malls i don't walk up and down if i'm not going for a destination i don't leave the house i go when i need to go and i come right back home and it sounds crazy like i'm supposed to be like totally over these things right and i think i am but i know i am but i don't know just that that lingers i i don't know how to fix that i literally don't know how to change the way i i i am because it's like i i just it's like there's a panic of i'm going to get lost somewhere out there and if i ever i'm lost like i am panicked like driving and if i don't know where i'm at like i'd go i go berserk i start crying because i get that panic in my spirit like i'm getting lost again i won't find my way back home 
and um so in event so that was part of my childhood me being given away and then never getting home for four and a half years but in that four and a half years i went through a lot of um physical abuse verbal and physical abuse with um, my auntie who my dad gave me to and i think my dad just trusted that they were going to be able to take care of me and um he just sent me there but they weren't very nice like it was a lot of abuse really um so i was thinking about some of it this morning and i'm not negative i'm not negative about any of it i'm not i'm still i'm not hurting over any of it right um i think i've gotten over that i've cried my many tears and i've gotten over it right but i still you know i was thinking about it this morning of just being locked outside just being locked out night after night um and being in the dark having your auntie um screaming at you through the door telling you go go f- go to the police station and go tell them your name is Jacqueline and let them find your parents tell them your dad's name is Ernol and your mom's name is Alice and tell them to find your parents we don't want you back here i'm not even like 5 years old like i don't know how to do that okay so um being 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 in a situation like that and you're scared you're not allowed to sit on the steps in front of the house because and then the dogs are barking so i can't even go to go to the police station like they're telling me to because i'm afraid of the dogs right so i'm stuck in the yard crying and i'm out there all night all night and um being also uh locked out in like in a kitchen area they have an out, outside kitchen and they would lock me in there like literally lock me in there and i remember one night my auntie she dressed up like um she dressed herself up like a ghost i think i'm still haunted by this one this particular incident um she dressed herself up like a ghost with like big long white sheets and powder all over her face and she came out to the kitchen and she came to the cr- kitchen window and she started making some weird noises and of course as a little girl I was so scared because I am alone out here and here comes this thing at the window and I started screaming my little heart out just for anybody to help me I just started screaming and I'm screaming and I'm screaming and she's and she's at the window doing all these weird things and I'm screaming but I don't recognize her as my auntie because she's wearing this covering and the sheets and the white powder on her face and a veil over herself and it, it just was so eerie i mean eerie and so i'm screaming and then she when she sees like i literally feel like when she felt that my heart was about to come out of my chest that was when she said it's just me it's just me and she's laughing but it's not funny i can't stop crying because This is not funny. This is I'm locked inside of a kitchen where I would have visions and dreams of ghosts pinching me under the table. Um people like there would be stones throwing at me and I have no idea where the stones are coming from. Um and I'm outside all by myself and this is over a period of years, okay? Remember I told you four and a half years, night after night after night. And um uh, when it's not that I'm being beaten every single day I get a whooping for no reason whatsoever. I have no idea. See the scar up in here? I get that because I was told to go pick up wood. I mean, I'm probably at this age maybe 6 and a half. Go find wood in the forest. And I go and I did my best to find these wood, but they all have these long um pricks on them. And I try to carry the bunch of the woods over and when I come I put it down to crawl over the fence and the girl threw this big rock at me and when she saw that it missed she came and she took the wood and she hit me across the face and it dig a deep hole inside of my forehead and um it was open like this and blood was just squirting forward and then she called um when when i started screaming out in in pain the auntie she came so she was the do- the mother of this of this daughter now and the auntie she came and she started saying oh my god what did you do to her i'm going to take her to the police station and this one is pulling me one way this way and one way this way and i'm screaming ah, ah and blood squirting out my face and they're t- they're tugging at me as if they're about to split me in half because one is saying i'm taking her to the police station why did you do this to her and the other one is saying come let me go wash it off 
Well, the one who says, come, let me go wash it off, won the battle, which is the daughter. And she took me and then they put water all over this new fresh cut. They start throwing water all over my face. So now, not only am I bleeding and squirting blood, but water and I'm feeling like I'm drowning. And then my auntie, she ran into the house and she bring out a big bottle of um, white rum, which they poured inside of it and it burn i mean when i say it burn and i'm just screaming and my eyes and everything and yeah so <laughs> these are the memories that i have in my head of my childhood and um so that was just some of some of them so anyways the one incident was where my auntie they beat me and they locked me outside in the kitchen and i remember that night i was hungry I don't I can't say they never feed me because I think they did I always eat okay they never made me go to bed hungry and they always give me proper clothing and my hair was I had a lot of hair so they took good care of my hair and they everybody wanted to touch my hair and to play my hair and so I always looked very well put together but under big big time abuse um, behind closed doors and so that night I was locked into the kitchen and I started to say, um, I, I realized that there was a, a whole cooked chicken. Like they had cooked like a big old chicken and left it out there, locked it up, you know, cover it up and everything. And I'm in the night I'm hungry and I'm thinking uh, in my young little mind, I don't know why I decided that I was going to eat that chicken. I was going to eat that chicken because I felt upset that they always locked me out here. So I decided I was going to eat that chicken and I formulated in my mind that if they ever ask me who did that, I'm going to tell them that I didn't do it. It was the, um, it was the, the cat, the cat that ate the chicken. <laughs> So I sat there over that chicken and I tell you, I never enjoyed a chicken so good in my life. I ate the whole chicken. When I'm talking, talking, imagine a turkey that you cook for, you know, but it was a smaller turkey. So it's a chicken, but it's a big chicken, you know, Jamaican, big, big um, home, homemade chicken, you know. And I just ate that whole chicken until it got down to <laughs> one bone because I used to eat everything, bone and everything. Like I'd swallow it all, right? And I got down to one one bone of the one of the thighs, and I decided at that point, if I ate the whole thing, they're gonna know it's me. But if I leave one, they might think it's the cat. And for some reason, I left it and I covered it back up again. It's silly me, because I forgot that the cat wouldn't know how to cover the pot. So I covered the pot, and I went on the next day. You know, go to school, and on when my way home, I'm all scared to go home. And then I look, my my niece, my cousin was coming for me. And of course, I started crying when I saw her with her long stick in her hand coming and I started crying and I'm like, it's not me. It's the cat. Before anybody asked me any question, I was giving my story. It's not me. It's the cat. And of course, she drove me all the way home, you know, with licks and stuff like that. And I got home and I remember that day that she pulled me to the fire. And when she dragged me to the fire, she took my hand and she just took a live stick of uh, fire from the from the fire and she just held it onto my fingers like she just held it and I was screaming but I'm too little to pull my hand away from her and she held it till the whole flesh melted and you could see nothing but white underneath it so my whole black skin came off and you could see the white parts of my body my skin underneath and um, I was just screaming and I remember how painful that was I don't think I've ever stolen since that time I think I learned my lesson um, after that but that was my only thing that I've ever stolen in my life. Um, and uh, I, anyways, so I'm telling you all of this because I'm, I'm about to tell you guys. I don't know why I'm telling this story, but I want to tell you that God is real, okay? Everything that I say on here is really just to talk about the goodness of God and the mercy of God in my life. Um, and that's why I'm, I'm in love with Jesus. I'm literally in love with him. Some people would be bitter and they would say, why did I have to go through the things that I've been through? And I mean, I haven't told you half of my story, but if I can tell you that I went through these things and I'm still here, I could have been dead, but I'm still here. Um, they could have killed me. Literally, they could have just thrown me away and just killed me. And nobody would have ever known what became of me. Um, because nobody ever came back for me. It was one of my, the same auntie who took me there actually came back and brought me back after four and a half years. Um, and this was after they've done ill-treated me and everything and didn't want me so they must have somehow gotten to them and say come and get her you know because they didn't want me but I wasn't a bad child I literally was the child if you say jump my only question would be how high 
I was that kind of child. Like you, you could tell me to do anything and I would do it. I never had a, I, I, I couldn't talk back. I was in fear. You understand? Um, I was fearful of women because the, the, my abusers were women. My abusers were women. Um, it, there would be men in the family that would be, would be okay, would be great with me. Um, visitors who were men who would come by, they would try, they would notice the, the things that I'd go through and somehow they would try to find a way to pull me aside and, you know, give me some milk or something like that. And then my cousins would find out about it and then they, they start taking the milk and say, I'm going to give it to her in the kitchen. When we get in the kitchen, they would drink it all and they would make me go without. Um, and, uh, just things like that. But, um, I grew up just not liking um women very much really it took me a long time to get over it like i just didn't like women at all and i can understand why some people grow up and they t tend to have like an, a proclivity towards you know one sex or the other because of some stuff that they've been through in their lives right but um i didn't like women because i just felt that they were so mean they were just mean if you i didn't want anything to do with women but i got over that and i got to the point where i can deal with people i can be submitted to a female boss for example whereas before it would be just like i would just not want anybody i i failed my driving lessons because it was a female that was teaching me and i i got through on the second time because it was a guy like i would not get a job if it was a female because I just knew right there and then I wasn't going to get the job. But if it's a guy, I would get the job. But I'm so grateful that the Lord has gotten me beyond that, that now none of those things um, bother me anymore. So what I was looking at, I said to myself, and I have some of these things I wrote down today. I said, when I think about the beatings that I receive, right, and how much um, I, I, was so, I was so abused physically, beaten till dogs, the dog in the yard would lick my wounds. The dog would be barking after the woman while she was beating me and trying to bite her. And she would just be going around the dog and beating me. And the dog would just lick every wound. Everywhere she hits, the dog would lick it to soothe my wound. And when I think about that, I said, so I was beaten till dogs had to lick my wounds. But Jesus was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquity, the Bible says, and that the chastisement of my peace, that which was supposed to come to me, was placed upon him so that what I, a Gentile dog, could be made a part of this thing that I could be engrafted in. When I think about being locked out, being just locked out of a home, out of the house and having to sleep outside or to be locked away into a kitchen. And I said, so I was locked out as a child. But here I am today, I can truly say that I am shut in with God in a secret place. Ah, oh, thank you, Lord. Shut in with God. And I now have a right to access mm? locked out but now shut in with God beaten no hugs never know what it is to be hugged and to show to be shown love but yet now I can shout from the top of the mountain he touched me oh he touched me and oh the joy that fills my soul I was literally hated didn't do anybody anything, hated as a child and didn't understand why. But now I can say with full assurance, Jesus loves me. This I know because the Bible tells me so. It says little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Jesus loves me. When the lady, when my cousin, I have to call her the lady because I was a kid, but they were like older adults, you know. When she hit me in my forehead, she could have missed and she could have blinded my eyes. Yes, I could have been a blind woman, one eye gone right now because of this thing that she shoved into my forehead. To the point that if I hit this right now, it feels like it's bleeding on the inside. And I'm how many? I'm 49 years old. It's been so many, 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 many years ago. And yet, if I bump this, it feels like the whole head is bleeding on the inside. Because it hasn't even been healed on the inside. So almost blinded, but God has somehow 
opened my eyes to behold the amazing things out of his laws. So that I can see Jesus. So that I can see love and I can see Christ in everything that I do. And that I can see the beauty that surrounds me. Yeah, they burned my finger with fire, right? Just for eating meat. They took fire and held it onto my hands and burnt me. But Jesus says, freely invites me and say, come taste and see that the, the Lord is good. He says, my flesh is meat indeed and my blood is drink indeed. You can taste of me and live. They would hide out and drink the milk that the people would give to me and make me drink water instead. And Jesus comes now and says, drink of my blood. It is drink indeed. My God. I was just sitting here thinking this today. And I said, look at that. How they told me to go away. They said, go, go find your parents. Report to the police that your name is Jacqueline and that, you know, your, this is your mom and your dad. Let them find them and bring you there. And then God looks at me and he says, Jacqueline, I have called you by name. You are mine. So they rejected me, but Jesus picked me up and he says, you are mine. I called you by name. Oh, blessed be the name of Jesus. Praise God. Greetings to everyone that's watching right now. Erica, I see you. Raymond, I see you. Thank you all, all of you that are here with me today. I'm sorry, I, I don't know how to get back to see everybody. And so, again, I was looking at it and they poured water. Ah, they poured water. When I would sleep, they would have a young man in the house that would come and he would pour water all over me in my sleep to make it look as if I just peed the whole place up. And by the way, I wasn't even sleeping in a bed. They would make me sleep under the bed. Okay, they would make me sleep under the bed and then they, the young man would somehow find his way and pour water over me and go and tell his mom that I just peed so that she would come and call me and beat me in the night. So here they are pouring water over me and Jesus comes and Jesus says he pours his love all over me and he says rest in me. Rest in me, Jacqueline. And he poured his love over me. When they, that my auntie would take mangoes, mangoes that is so popular in, in Jamaica when it's mango season, nobody have to fight over mangoes. And she would take a mango and eat it down to the seed. And mangoes, <laughs> she would spit all over it. She would take the mango and, <laughs> and spit all over it till it's dripping with her spit. And then she would say to me, sit down here, eat it. And I would have no choice. With tears in my eyes, I would say, I don't want. And she said, eat it. And she would be ready with her, her, her belt for me. And I would have to eat that mango. This was my auntie. And I would have to sit and eat all that spit, that hawking spit that she would bring up out of her stomach. And I would have to eat that. And I looked at that today. And the Lord says to me, Jacqueline, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. He says, blessed is the one that trusts in him. Just taste of me. Uh, I thought I wouldn't cry right now. But when I think of how I got over it, and the fact that right now, mangoes is like my number one fruit. <laughs> you want to catch me, you give me mangoes. <laughs> because the Lord didn't allow me to let that keep me from loving mangoes. I overcame to the point that mangoes is my number one fruit. I will eat that thing night and day. And now I can buy my own mangoes. And I can eat as much as I want. And nobody is abusing me and spitting all over it and saying eat. I just... <sighs> I'm sorry, I, I wasn't planning on crying. But I thank God for his mercies. I thank him for his faithfulness. I thank God for his goodness in my life. He's brought me through many things, but he has kept me. He has kept me. And the Bible tells us that he prepares a table 
in the presence of our enemies. And so the one thought that came to me today when I was thinking of what to say and the Lord just dropped a thought in my mind and that's why I started going through my life where the Lord just says he would he's going to use he will use your enemies to feed you. He will cause your enemies to feed you. They will they will become your provision. They might fight against you. But the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. The wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. The Lord says, I'm going to use them and they will become your provision. I just want to thank God right now because no matter who comes against me right now, I know that I have the victory. Yeah, I know that I have the victory. I know that no weapon that is formed against me, they have been formed since I was a little girl trying to destroy me. I've had so many times that I could have been just dead but God has kept me alive for a reason for a reason I don't know what it is I am just thankful that I have this opportunity right now to minister a word to somebody and I hope that everything that I open my mouth and I say that somebody is empowered that somebody is is um you know touched by it and that somehow if you if you feel like you don't want to keep on going on with Jesus that you will fall over in love with him again because he's just too good he's just too amazing to give up he's just too amazing where would i be if, if if jesus didn't love me if i didn't and at the time when i was going through this it's not like i loved him i knew nothing of god nobody ever sat me down and talked to me about jesus i didn't know anything of god all i knew was abuse all i knew was being abused but i now know because the lord has kept me and he started bringing me up in him and to teach me his ways and all of a sudden i now know that i am loved i know that i am free i know that i am blessed and i know that there is nothing that can ever come against me that can overcome me because god says he has made me an overcomer i'm an overcomer you understand this is part of my dna i'm an overcomer so regardless of what comes upon me right now i know i'm gonna be okay i wanted to share that with you guys and i wanted to bless your heart today and just to pray that you know each one of us that we will stand fast in the liberty where Christ has set us free and that we do not be entangled again in the yoke of bondage, that we do not allow ourselves to go back and um, forget about God. You know, um, I don't know. I, um, I'm trying to think what I should do right now. I'm sorry, guys, because whenever I pray, I need to cover my head. So I'm going to cover my head and I'm going to pray a small prayer. <laughs> That's so funny. Anyways, to God be the glory. So, Father, in your mighty name, I give you all honor. I give you all praise. I give you all glory. I am thankful, Lord, for what you have brought me through. I am thankful for where you're bringing me to. Lord Jesus, I know that I am not perfect, Lord, but I know that your spirit is what is working on me, Lord. And that's making me perfect. That is perfecting me, O oh God. Thank you, God, that from the day that I was born, you have been perfecting me. You have been molding me and you've been making me. And I know, God, that the Bible says that I was created in your perfect image, Lord. But God, I want to come up in the fullness of the stature of Christ so that I will be more like Christ. When you walk the earth in the person of Jesus Christ, that I will be more like you in love, in compassion, uh, in giving, in serving that I will be more like you, Lord Jesus. Father God, help me that my heart, my heart will be right with you. If there is anything that is not in line with your word, that is not in line with the call that you have placed upon my life, let me get rid of it, Lord Jesus. Bring it to the forefront and let me get rid of it. My life, oh God, I surrender to you. And I'm praying right now for those that are hearing me today, Lord, that will listen to this video, Lord, because I know that there are many out there that have gone through stuff and that needs to be strengthened oh god they may never have been able to talk about their issues lord my god they may not be able to put it into words like i can lord but god in the name of jesus somehow you will speak to their hearts and help them to know god that the past is that 
what it is. It is the past. That they have come this far by faith. That they are to continue going forward, leaning on the Lord. And God, that they will never ever give up or throw in the towel or turn back. That they will not turn their backs on you. That they will not become like those that turn back in the day of battle. My God, but they will run the race with patience, looking unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of their faith. God, empower your people, everyone that is a part of this site, Lord, everyone that will come here and will get a word, be it from me or anybody else on the site or anywhere that they will receive a word. Give them the ability, God, to, to sift through what is good and to take what is good for their bodies and for their minds. In the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, that you are Lord in my life and I just want to glorify you as Lord and lift you up and let the world know that you are real. Let the world know, God, that you are for real. My God, I cannot look back and, and blame you for whatever happened over my past, Lord. But I'm so grateful that every step of the way, I've seen your footsteps. I've seen the footprints that you have been showing me, Lord, and making sure that I, I make it into my future, that I make it into my destiny. And Lord, you are not finished with me yet. And God, I'm on the altar. I'm on the altar, Lord Jesus. Whatever you choose to do with me, Lord, I am yours. Now, God, have your way. Bless us as a, as a people. Bless my God, Jesus lovers and God, the, the sight, Lord, and every person who will come on here, Lord, and let your name be glorified in and through us. We pray and we thank you for revelation, oh God, as to how to go forward in Jesus' mighty name. I bless you all in Jesus' name. God bless you. Hallelujah.